citizen. Oh, oh, oh. Out of many we are. We are world citizens. Same vision is for equal rights and justice. For the people, them, what's happening to this beautiful world that we're living in? World citizen, lift up your voices. Welcome. Well, you know we Welcome to, to the People Powered Planet Podcast, where we partner together to create a world that works for everyone and nature, of course. Um, we're so honored and excited and thrilled beyond words to have our guest today, Dr. Rian Eisler. Um, I know a lot of you know her from The Chalice and the Blade, amazing book, incredible book. If you haven't read it, there is no time to wait. You need to get that book. Um, of course, she's written so many other books, and she is a futurist, a historian, and of course, a system scientist studying systems. So um, the other books, Nurturing Our Humanity, Sacred Pleasure, The Real Wealth of Nations, uh, on and on and on. We'll tell you about her um, Center for Partnership Systems. You'll see uh, her, she's got so much stuff on her website, so many tools, and now a podcast, The Power of Partnership Podcast. So she's there for us to learn from to uh, understand our world. She has done so much research, it's beyond comprehension. So it's just a wonderful thing to do to listen to her. And today we are going to get her perspective on the new movie, Barbie. So I'm gonna ask uh, the first question. Rian, I would like to find out, how did you feel after the film? Well, I, I have to say that I had mixed feelings. I really enjoyed the movie. I mean, it's very entertaining, you know, the dance numbers and uh, the color, the photography is fantastic, um, you know, et cetera. The acting is great. Uh, but conceptually, it really uh, lacks, from my perspective and from the research perspective, what we need, which is a new frame. Uh, it, it really starts uh, that way with uh, a, an homage mm -hmm. to 2001. Mm -hmm. And of course, if you remember that movie, it starts with a humanoid creature who discovers somehow that he can use what he thought was a, you know, just a tool for digging up things or or hunting, that he can use it to kill a fellow human. And that, to, to, to have homage to that, uh, really sets the stage for the worldview. Uh, and then it goes on with this very, uh, it's very dramatic with these girls and their dolls. But the truth of the matter is that there's absolutely no evidence uh, you know, it says that from time immemorial, you know, girls have only uh, had dolls um, that uh, we, we have burials, for example, uh, a recent find uh, that women did hunting in these older, more partnership oriented gathering, gathering hunting societies, not hunting, gathering, as we've been told. So the opening really sets the stage for us to realize that, yeah, this is in the old paradigm where there are only two possibilities, patriarchy or matriarchy. In other words, somebody has to dominate and someone has to be dominated. And that's the theme, even though matriarchy is somewhat softer and it becomes uh, gee, they understand that, you know, they did an injustice to Ken, to men, if you will. Um, but it's still old paradigm. So um, I would have done something else with the film, um, leaving the wonderful, wonderful uh, messages about how women have, have the, the, you know, that you, 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 it's all, everything is your fault. 
it's, it's interesting that they didn't bring up Eve or Pandora, uh, you know, which are the sort of um, really uh, meta narratives that we have inherited, you know, that somehow everything is woman's fault. Why? Who knows? <laughs> you know, because it's the out group, right? Yes. So it's... yes, uh, but but it was a very uh, enjoyable movie with some of the messages that I think are good, but yes. some of the messages which I think unfortunately are misleading. Yes, and not just about that opening scene, I was very disturbed about it. I'm like, ah, oh, what's happening? <laughs> ah, and uh, I even watched uh, Space Odyssey, 2001 Space Odyssey, to, a little bit to, you know, what is the filmmaker trying to say? But like you say, there are so many, uh, what I call teachable moments. I find myself in my in the real world going around this 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 line pops into my head i mean when a movie does that to you you know it's affected you you know that it's there's something there like the the part where she says if my feet were shaped like this i would never wear high heels you know that just comes in my mind even though i don't wear high heels but I love the fact that the film is a great discussion point and very teachable. There's so much to it. And the Barbies are not perfect. They are um, in the domination system. Uh, the, we can go into the ending later, but it's just uh, uh, there are there are points where it could have done this or that. And I totally agree. It's a great film. I've watched it three times. I recommend it to everyone. I think I think. It'll be interesting to get the men's perspective. Thinking, uh, uh, speaking of men, Arthur, let's hear your perspective. Uh, you mentioned this as a teachable moment, and uh, you've written a parenting guide. You've talked about how so crucial to the evolution of of returning us to a partnership society is the way we parent our kids. Uh, how much do you see the Barbie movie? You know, this, this Barbie's, of course, is reach his kid. How do you see this as fitting into the parenting guide? How can this be a tool for parents to begin to teach the kids about the issues that, you're, that are important to you? Well, I think the relationship between the America character, you know, played by America, um, and her daughter um, is um, a loving one. And um, certainly that uh, shows that there is this bond uh, but it isn't only uh, I mean the father sort of appears intermittently uh, and he seems to be a nice guy but it really doesn't involve both parents unfortunately it kind of is you know mothers do mothering and that's the the big event and certainly it is the big event in many ways I mean, there's evidence, for example, that nothing less than human language came out of not men having to communicate to better hunt, which is a you know a fable of nomination systems, but of mothers communicating with their children, uh, and uh, this has been suggested by uh, Umberto Maturana, uh, by. Uh, McLean, I mean by neuroscientists, uh, but somehow it hasn't entered the mainstream, you know, and um, unfortunately this is a film, uh, it certainly is a feminist film, um, showing how women's situation in a domination system that is patriarchal is impossible you know but and it shows the hypocrisy and i love that thing about we've learned how to do it better remember that guy towards the second? oh my gosh that yes. that was just like a, a yeah. very scary moment when, yeah. when you hear it, that yeah. yeah but on the other hand um it really does a disservice to men, for one thing, this movie, because uh, men, yeah, I mean, it shows how men are 
really taught, you know, to think of, quote, masculinity as just being in control and uh, on top and winning. Uh, but there's so much more to men than just being able to cry. I mean, you know, the, the changes in, in masculinity and, and Arthur that goes back to the parenting guide, goes back to fathers being caregivers. And um, I see that Diane S. says, glad to say that men can be thinking parents too, precisely. And, uh, you know, that doesn't really come through. Mm. But, um, and yes, Amy writes, so much of raising men is about preparing them to follow orders and kill as soldiers. And I should add, to be killed. <laughs> Yes. Because that's really men haven't had it so well uh, in in domination, patriarchal domination systems, because if some guy on top, like a Putin, wants more territory, they're expected to give nothing less than their lives, right? Yes. As, as so, you say, it doesn't work, you know, it doesn't work for doesn't. either gender or any gender. It doesn't. I, it's funny, when I watched it different times, I was uh, becoming more and more empathetic to the Cans. Um, in the beginning, I was like, oh, I'm in a world where, you know, it's, oh, you didn't really notice. Okay, you're in the Barbie world. Wow, this is great. And women power and just fantastic. And then you go in the real world and then you're like, boom. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's awful. And then I watched it, like I said, uh, the third time. And I'm just... Uh, feel sorry for the cans. I feel sorry for the women. I feel sorry for uh, the limitations that people have. And uh, so, 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 I, but I still enjoyed it every single time. So it's a great movie. Um, let's see. There's, like I was saying, the teachable moments. Um, there's the one thing that also, another line that really comes to me is Ken saying to Barbie, you failed me. Out there, I was somebody people respect. How does it feel? How does it feel? It's not, it's not fun, is it? So, ah, so here's Barbie being spoken to and to told that, you know, I'm not living in a great world. Yeah, how does it feel? What did you think of that particular moment? Well, it was a, a confused moment in the film. Because he says this after he had created this patriarchal dominator regime, you know, only men count and women serve them and uh, massage their egos and blah, blah, blah. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, I mean, to say that she failed him, uh, and I think this is one of the messages of the movie, really. And it's a good message that it's Ken and it's Barbara, really. I would have changed it to at that point, but uh, instead of Barbie, because that's sort of a diminishing term, you know, it makes you sound well like a doll. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah. But, you know, it's easy to critique this movie uh, once you have another frame. And maybe we really need to talk about that frame a little, because what the research shows is that the alternative to patriarchy is not matriarchy. I mean, whether men dominate or women dominate, uh, it's a domination system. The real alternative is a partnership system. But to see that, you have to really, number one, leave behind the conventional categories we've all been taught, like right-left, religious-secular, capitalist-socialist, Eastern-Western, uh, Northern-Southern, uh, conservative and liberal, because they really fragment our consciousness. Um, for one thing, I mean, think about it, they either marginalize all of them or ignore nothing less than the majority of humanity, women and children. And not only that, if you really pull back, 
you see that there have been repressive, regressive uh, societies in every one of these categories. I mean, you can have nomination systems that are uh, Eastern. Uh, think of the Taliban. Uh, think of uh, Iran, right? Think of Hamas. Uh, but you can also have domination systems in the West. I mean, uh, in Western, Westernized uh, nations. Mm. Uh, think of Putin. You know that Putin actually, um, he passed a law that reduces the penalty for family violence. That's right. So if you hurt or kill a child, a woman or a man in a family, your penalty is less mm. than if you hurt or kill a stranger. Now, why? Why would he do that? Well, because he sees the connection between a rigidly male-dominated, highly punitive authoritarian family in which, yes, their violence and fear, you know, is what hold it together, the fear of violence, really, uh, and that kind of a state, an authoritarian, male-dominated, highly punitive and violent state. And we need to see those connections, but we also need to see a different configuration. This is the configuration of a partnership system. Uh, and it is really a partnership domination scale. It is not uh, really uh, a perfect partnership or domination system, but it's a matter of degree, okay? And uh, in that kind of a system, starting in families, but also going all the way into economics and politics and religion and what have you, you have a top-down authoritarian system. But gender, so not only is family important, but so is gender. Because in domination systems, as contrasted to partnership systems, you have a hidden system of gendered values. Mm -hmm. Where anything that is stereotypically now in domination systems associated with coded feminine is devalued. So there's always money. And now I'm moving to economics because it's informed. Both capitalism and socialism are really informed by this. By, well, if, if you think about Marx and Smith, they leave out the three life-sustaining sectors in their map of economics, the natural economy, the volunteer community economy, and the household economy. It's not part of GDP, is it? So that a tree, you know, we depend on trees really for to breathe because of the oxygen-carbon equation. Uh, it's only part of GDP when it's dead, when it's a log. I mean, this is crazy, but this is what we've inherited along with these old systems. So it, that so you have cornerstones. You have to change family. And you see a lot of trends in that direction, don't you? You have to change gender. And that's the theme of, of course, the Barbie movie is that there is something crazy about these, especially the feminine, but also the masculine stereotypes, really, where men are taught that their value depends on how much they own, how much they win, right? And of course, you have economics. I mean, domination economics create artificial scarcity and it isn't just uh so-called neoliberalism and they're wonderful at these at these really co-opting language here i mean neoliberalism trickle-down economics is pure domination economics 
whether it's a Chinese emperor of old, whether it's an Arab sheikh, whether it's a an Indian pasha, or whether it's a feudal lord, those on the bottom are supposed to content themselves with the scraps falling from the op from the opulent tables of those on tops. Mm -hmm. So Wimmer takes all, makes most of us losers, as Amy writes in her right. comments here. Um, yes. I mean, and of course, story and language. Unfortunately, Barbie perpetuates the old story to a large extent, not completely by any means. And this is what's so great about this movie is that it's a spoof, really, of the gender stereotypes um, of both women and men. And in that sense, it's, it's really not only a fun movie and an entertaining movie, but a movie with some good messages. But unfortunately, as I said, it has this bad message that somebody has to be on top and somebody has to be on bottom. When in fact, the alternative, and I'll repeat this, to both, to patriarchy is not matriarchy. The alternative to both is partnership. I love so much, boy. You said so many things that are so, so rich for thinking, but particularly, uh, I love that you said the division in the world is not really uh, left, right, nor south, uh, you know, uh, 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 all the, all these different divisions were depicted, but really it's dominator versus uh, versus a more partnership approach. And I think that particularly, uh, I come particularly to mind when you mentioned uh, Putin. I mean, here is this incredibly horrible dominator aggression invasion, but also uh, on the other side, you have that completely countered by uh, absolute war domination, killing, same in, same in Israel. Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, one side is uh, oppressing and dominating, so the other side uses more military to smash and kill, and that creates even more anger, and it goes back and forth, it escalates. But I think about, in relation to Russia, that there is another model. I mean, here was, uh, uh, tanks came rolling into Lithuania and Estonia and so on, uh, when the Soviet, mighty Soviet Union had, was with the KGB, was so super powerful and unbeatable, and the people joined together in partnership, and created a singing revolution. They 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 joined hands from across all three of those nations. When they when the tanks came rolling in, people stood up to them, uh, women and men together, and and the whole society mobilized against the tanks. And you know they would rush toward the tanks and and block them. And yes, uh, uh, ten or fourteen people got killed, rolled over with tanks. But finally, when the people wouldn't give up, the tanks withdrew, and the Soviet Union began to crumble. I mean the most powerful force all throughout Eastern Europe that was crumbling uh, the dominator uh, old Soviet Union model was not uh, a dominator model, but a partnership model of, of nonviolence. Uh, in, in the movie, Ken, they said the men went to war because they didn't know who they were. Maybe we don't know who we are when we think we have to, you know, meet violence with violence. Maybe we don't know who we really are and the real power we have in partnership. Can you talk a little more about that? Well, it's a very, um, I'm a Holocaust survivor. All right. I mean, I am a child refugee with my parents from the Holocaust. And if the United States had not countered with violence against Hitler, I would be dead, of course, and our world would be very, very different from what it is today. So uh, you mentioned Hamas. Unfortunately, the men in Hamas and the women who sympathize and support them uh, have been indoctrinated with this in-group versus out-group thinking, with the traumas probably starting in their families, uh, going on with the economics, et cetera, et cetera, to deflect all of their rage and dehumanize the other. So what happened is that the people in Palestine have been betrayed by their leaders. They were betrayed first because their leaders rejected the partition, which what became Israel, the Jews, 
are accepted. They rejected five different offers, five different offers of peace, because for them, peace is not the point. They are so in the domination model that winning and killing is the point. So I think we really have to understand that uh, I, I feel terrible about what's happening in Palestine. I feel terrible about, you know, there was a woman who, um, an Israeli woman who was part of this festival, which ironically was a festival of peace and love, remember? And um, she hid in a bramble bush. She jumped into it and she survived. She saw one woman killed, a young woman from the festival, and another one taken as a hostage. And she wrote afterwards that it was very clear to her uh, that they did not, the Hamas men did not see Jews as human beings. The dehumanization of the other. So naturally, uh, and that was the whole thing with the wall, the wall, I mean, I, I have to give this history because, yes, Israel became more of a domination system. There's no question about it. This is what happens to garrison states surrounded by enemies who want to kill you. You become more of a dominator, just as we countered Hitler uh, when it became, or Japan, when it became clear that it would be you know, a death to, well, certainly all Jews, but really that it would become a totally untenable situation. And uh, when people see weakness in offers of peace, why did it succeed what you said, Arthur, because you had Gorbachev? And Gorbachev was not going to really, it, it, Gorbachev was not a Hitler, he was not a Hamas. And I agree that force only begets more force. Violence begets only more violence. But uh, as long as there is a dominator attacking, um, I think you have to fight back, unfortunately. You know, I think that the very beginning of the crisis, there were a lot of uh, people pushing for a nonviolent movement, but that kind of got swept aside. But our subject today is not to talk so much about uh, any Pacific battle. It seems to me in almost every uh, war, you have the do the dominator side who wants to solve on both sides, who want to use war, oppression, killing more people. And then you have a whole different, uh, more partnership approach of coming together, uh, coming, to, coming to agreements, finding win-win solutions, finding uh, you know, synergistic solutions. And, you know, we, even in the midst of any of these conflicts, we've had, uh, my daughter works with the American Friends Service Committee in, in the Middle East, and they've had terrific schools and stuff where Israelis and Palestinians work together and come to love and care about each other. I mean, any of these people put in a different system could come together and, and work together. And so that's why I'm so interested in your work as a systems change uh, expert. And that seems to me the key to to so much of this, uh, how much do you how do you see us evolving toward a system change where where we where we where we don't just see one side has to dominate or the other, but where we evolve a a, a partnership model? Well, this takes us right back to the Barbie movie, because uh, here was an opportunity to show that there can be a change in consciousness. And I would have ended this movie very differently, obviously, uh, with an understanding that starting with these two forms, you know, and everybody in between um, them, you can live in partnership rather than have one be in control or the other one be in control. Uh, that it would have been a talk about teaching moments it would have been fantastic uh, and i hope that the next iteration of a 
movie of this genre, and I hope there will be many, will not start with the Kubrick 2001 and the let's kill and, and, and that's always how it's been and women have always played only with 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 being mothers and blah 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 <laughs> which for which there's no evidence yeah in fact the evidence is that women really played so many roles and you know this latest find of of women hunters <laughs> i mean and and they do hunt i mean even mothers apparently hunt so go go for that I mean, um, it ignores, but we have been cognitive dissonance is is mentioned in the film. And it's really interesting because it is a film based on cognitive dissonance, um, yeah. which not only for men and for women, uh, but for everybody in between that somehow somebody has to be on, has to win and somebody has to lose so i think you asked how does it start it starts with a change in consciousness that there is a partnership alternative and that for millennia we humans build societies that while not perfect by any means are oriented more to the partnership side okay that yes that was the ending is so interesting. There was the the scene where the president, uh, she says, uh, I don't think things should go back to the, the way they were. No Barbie or Ken should be living in the shadows. And then they, then they, then the other Ken, not um, Ryan Gosley, but the other Ken comes up and kind of bows to her like a servant and says, Madam President, may the Kens please have one Supreme Court justice. And then the president goes, oh, I can't do that, but maybe a lower circuit court judgeship. So that was the perfect moment for her, you know, to have this realization, aha moment where, oh my gosh, yes. You know, she started out knowing that, but then something else kicked in where she put it down and it was just like ah so close um yes that and then it goes the the voiceover says well the kens have to start somewhere and one day the kens will have as much power and influence in barbie land as women have in the real world so that's oh, what an interesting thing to say because then that means they're not going to get what does that mean what what's your take on all that well uh of course, it's, yeah, it's squarely within the domination model. But I want to talk about what Quanta Dawn Light just wrote. Uh, you know, religious fundamentalism, whether it's Jewish, whether it's Christian, whether it's Muslim, it's domination fundamentalism. It's all based on uh, suppressing women you know look at the fundamentalism of iran in the muslim world so jewish fundamentalism is the same so i absolutely uh, don't think that uh you know you can equate being jewish which i am um with what this uh, right-wing spiritual leader of a group of fundamentalist Jews has to say, which is, you know, I mean, children in Gaza are taught uh, that Jews are dogs and pigs, and how you can be this cruel to dogs and pigs is beyond me. But, you know, uh, it's it's the reverse side of the coin. You, you cannot equate um, all Jews with fundamentalist Jews who are as brainwashed as uh, other fundamentalists are, starting with this matriarchy, patriarchy thing with this, you know, it has to be patriarchal, right? And um, I, look, I don't have perfect answers, but what I do have is uh, that is 
yes, I believe that violence begets more violence and is tragic, but unless both sides uh, give up the notion that they have to win, it's not going to change. It's just not going to change. If you don't think there is an alternative, that the partnership alternative doesn't exist, okay? And if you don't understand that to change the system, you have to address family, the punitive family, which as I, uh, you know, uh, nurturing our humanity is very much based on the latest neuroscience. And it shows that children in highly punitive dominator families who are taught to deflect their anger and rage at being hurt, at being uh, punished, really, uh, tend to think that it's their fault, okay? But then they deflect that to the out group. And you see that, unfortunately, so much in the people in the United States who follow uh, these people who just want to, who are angry, angry, hate, hateful, mm -hmm. full of hate. And gender is so important. If we don't change this notion of that matriarchy and patriarchy are the only alternatives, we've lost right there. And economics, we have an economic system that fails to value and reward what is coded feminine, like caring and caregiving. Think about that. Now, there are trends in that direction, and that is so important. I mean, there are the struggle for our future is not between right and left and religious and secular and Eastern and Western and Northern and Southern. It's between a domination orientation or a partnership orientation. And that's really my message. Um, will it be perfect? I don't know. Will it be better? I have no doubt. You know, this is a perfect time when you when you mentioned that's your message to uh, to bring in some of the fabulous, fabulous comments that are being made in the meeting chat. There's so much rich stuff there. Uh, we don't have time to go through all of it, and we want to get open to live questions. But I do want to throw in the one from Annette, who said, when I went to see Barbie, my friend and I were approached by a male teen who needed to debrief. He said, I see the stereotypes, but what can I do without making it worse? It was a conversation we all wanted to have. Our conversation was as memorable as the movie. Uh, can you comment on that, please? And then maybe turn it over to other questions. Well, I'm so glad that the movie led to that conversation. And as I said, the movie has parts of it, which are the questioning of gender stereotypes is a very important part of the movement from domination to partnership. Now it is, and the movie succeeds in saying how important that is because most people are either women or men. I mean, there are many, many people in between and always have been, by the way. And in more partnership-oriented societies, uh, there is respect for them as well, okay? Rather than this fear and this rage. And, you know, in Iran, they, they throw homosexuals from mountains to kill them or hang them. I mean, we have to understand that these gender stereotypes are fundamental to domination systems because what does it really teach? It teaches children from day one to equate difference, beginning with this difference in form between male and female with either superiority or inferiority, right? With either dominating or being dominated, with either being served or serving. So what you have is a, a first lesson, really, through gender, don't you? That there are only two alternatives. You either dominate or you're dominated. There is no partnership alternative. 
And that is right back to gender. And in that respect, I think the Barbie movie is very important. Yes, very important. So yes, we do have some questions coming in and a real quick question from Amy. Amy, if you could go ahead and uh, go ahead and read your question. (laughs) Okay. Um, Very good. Wonderful. I'm just in honor of your work. A quick question is because I need to do this. uh, I'm curious about your perspective on the Russian Orthodox reverence of the divine feminine um, as it plays out in the current Ukraine-Russia conflict. Uh, And I've been told by uh, folks of Eastern European background that uh, mothers are really important that they rule in the household and that they have the power, if you will, to call their sons back from battle. So I'm just, I'm just curious how this fits into this particular religious frame in your perspective. Well, I really don't know enough about the Russian Orthodox Church. I do know that the uh, Holy Family, I mean, we're only the f- you know, of of Christianity, where only the father and the son, the males, are divine. And the only woman in that holy family, the mother of God yet, is mortal, is a reflection of the shift to a domination system. Because in the old, more uh, partnership-oriented society, uh, the divine feminine was part of the iconography, a great mother. Now, if you look at the cover of The Chalice and the Blade, you see something very interesting in that figure, which uh, we use for a reason. It is an androgynous figure. It has breasts, but it's phallic in form, right? And not only that, it's a bird goddess with a beak. So what is it about? It's about the interconnection of all life, which strangely enough, uh, we just had a Nobel Prize in physics to scholars who were talking about interconnection, about non-locality. It seems to be a principle in the design of the universe. And from that a perspective, a domination system is really an aberration. Mm. And I think it is very much based on trauma. Wow. Very much based on trauma. Wow. And uh, that the traumas, as I said, are built, I mean, domination economics, for example, creates yeah. scarcity by misdistributing to those on top, by not supporting Uh, really parenting, uh, nurturing children, feeding children, causing trauma Mm -hmm. uh, by, uh, it's it's a screwy system, as I said, (laughs) you know, in terms of of so much. Mm -hmm. So all I can say is somehow the divine feminine has managed to survive (laughs) uh, in Mary, uh, although she became this weird, you know, sort of uh, totally dehumanized, actually, figure, you know, uh, who, uh, you know, and there's this contrast between the virgin and the whore. I mean, women have really been, have had it, but so have men in domination systems, you know, Um, not as bad as women, certainly, but as the Barbie movie shows, not so good either. Exactly. My goodness. I mean, the divine feminine survives and it doesn't (laughs) survive only through Wicca or something like that. It survives even in Orthodox. uh, Yeah, in the Orthodox Church. So I'm sorry that I can't really Uh, answer your question directly, but indirectly, Mm -hmm. uh, it reflects an understanding of the divine feminine. Quanta, did you have a little more to add? I was, you know, I have read the Old Testament 
three, four times, and, uh, and, and as well as the New Testament. And I've been to Israel six times. And what I wanted to ask was, you know, because you were mentioning that you view each other as animals, less than human, both in the Old Testament and also, like you said, the, the uh, there is nothing in the Quran that says other people are animals other than Muslim. They don't say that. But it is in the Old Testament that it does say it puts the Gentiles in the second class and so we cannot avoid that. What I wanted to say is that what has brought from that, you know, couple of thousand or 3,000 years ago, the teachings, because there's quite a bit of anti-woman and, and violence against women in the Old Testament, and I think you know that. So what has helped the Jewish community to progress to a degree that the these teachings that are still there from thousands of years ago are not really uh, applied in the Jewish community against one another, which is wonderful. But then this war is showing that people do pull those teachings out of the shelves. And I don't think it is just the fundamentalist Jews or fundamentalist Muslims or Christians. But when it becomes necessary and, and uh, usable, leaders do take those. So what can we do that these teachings are irrelevant for today's society, for today's humanity? I am a Baha'i and I believe in the oneness of humanity and, and Baha'i teachings put women ahead of man, actually, that they are more courageous. Mm -hmm. So I'm... Um, I want to ask you, what has helped the Jewish community to progress to such a degree, despite the teachings that are contrary to how they developed now? Thank you. Well, thank you, uh, Quanta Don. Um, I want to make two corrections. One in the Quran, uh, it says you kill the infidel, kill the infidel. Um, and, and that is why sometimes people are simply lynched, like in Pakistan, because they question anything about Muhammad or the Quran. They're infidels. So it isn't only the Old Testament. Um, it is, uh, has infected. I have proposed um, that we really bring together scholars, enlightened scholars from all the world's religions to sort the domination and the partnership elements in our scriptures, whether they're Hindu, where all of these guys are killing each other, you know, and they win and good wins and evil is, I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's the whole thing is a dominator saga, really. Um, but at the core, at the core, and this is what takes me to, uh, to your question. At the core of all the world's teachings is uh, this core of partnership teachings, like do one to others. You know, Isaiah was the first to say that. The, the, the Old Testament is such a terribly mixed bag. And that's why I'd like to bring together uh, these scholars to sort them because what happened is that in the course of the shift from a partnership to a domination society, yes, much of it was through violence, but it also was as the chalice and the blade. I have two chapters called Reality Stood on Its Head in that book. Uh, it was through remissing, changing the story. So while giving birth is part of the old sacred iconography, a woman giving birth. When I was a girl, you couldn't be a school teacher if you were pregnant because God forbid children should see a pregnant belly, right? I mean, uh, you, you know, I mean, it's okay for children to watch violence, but it's not okay for them to watch real sexual pleasure, mutuality, erotica, 
And there's a difference between erotica and pornography, as I show in my book, uh, Sacred Pleasure, which talks about the erotization of domination and violence. That's right. We have inherited that along with, uh, you know, blaming women and sex and everything else, you know, for all of our sins. So Baha'i is really an attempt, as uh, is the fact that Jews, for the most part, uh, have been leaders in the civil rights movement, in all of the movements for social justice. Uh, I mean, you're quite right. Uh, it has been really going to the heart of the Jewish teachings, which are the Muslim teachings, which are the Hindu teachings uh, of, of, of caring. Hmm. And, and my work is very much based on caring, hmm. on an economic system that, as the real wealth of nations proposes, of a caring economics of partnerism that values and rewards the work of caring for people starting at birth and caring for our natural life support systems, which neither Smith nor Marx valued. Hmm. I mean, think about it, for both Smith and Marx, for those the fathers of capitalism and socialism, uh, nature was just there to be exploited. There is nothing about caring for nature. As for caring for people starting at birth, according to both these men, it was supposed to be done for free by a woman in a male-controlled household. So much so that even when Marx, as latest, you know, when Marx in the 1900s wrote, there were still laws in many jurisdictions that a wife could not sue for injuries negligently inflicted on her. Only her husband could for loss of her services. We've got to be multidisciplinary. We've got to know our history. And Baha'i, of course, is an attempt, isn't it, to leave that behind. But I have to say one thing about Baha'i. It's still ruled by men, which I've never understood how it can, it, 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 it talks about educating women and, and all of this good stuff. But when you come right down to it, there are no women um, in the ruling council, which of course is the domination system. Wow. Well, goodness sakes, what a good question. And now I see Neil is here. Neil, I'm so excited to have you here and please go ahead with your comment or question. Uh, thanks, Melanie. Good to see you. Good to see you, Rianne. Um, uh, no doubt your work has definitely heavily influenced, uh, you know, what I do. Um, someone made a comment about, or you had made a comment about um, hunter women. And, you know, I want to share that my uh, close working partner, she hunts for her kids. And it's not a surprise that she's Native American. Um, and, you know, I want to share that in terms of my work with Native Americans, they share that their, their, their tribes, their nations are more matriarchal than patriarchal, not necessarily matriarchies, but, and I did, you know, these are things I didn't know. Um, and, you know, right now we're talking about killers of the flower moon and they refer to it as the Schindler's List of Native Americans. And the fact that it was domination culture versus the partnership culture in many ways. And they show the strength of the women in that movie. And I'd be curious if you had seen the movie or your thoughts on it. Um, and, you know, and our work right now is a path to indigenous cultural revitalization it starts with really healing from the historical trauma and then starting to measure wealth in a, in a caring currency. So, the, you know, these are all concepts and, and, and ideas that come from, in many ways, things that you've been uh, sh sharing for decades. And I would love to hear your thoughts about like um, learning from indigenous cultures. Well, I highly recommend that you watch a program I did with Lila June who is a native, half Native American and half European woman who discovered the chalice and the blade while she was doing her thesis work, which she has now completed 
on how Native American people worked in harmony with nature in their farming mm. for a long, long time. In other words, uh, it, it is fascinating that she uh, came to the conclusion that these were more partnership rather than matriarchal. Because what you have to understand is that all of these Native American cultures have, of course, come in contact with, uh, traumatically, uh, horribly, with uh, the conquistadores first, and then, but but they were already uh, in in Peru, you know, the Inca, uh, the Aztecs, they were already domination oriented. Mm -hmm. But if you go back long enough, and if you go back long enough also to the Native American cultures in the what is today the United States, you find a very different way of life. Um, and um, so, yes, there is a lot to be learned from indigenous wisdom, including long-term thinking. I mean, thinking uh, we have policies like like the uh, in economics. We have, I'm sure that it was well intentioned. The only problem is that the annual, you know, the quarterly report is a mess. You know, I'm sure it was well intentioned for corporations to give quarterly reports, but uh, it's it's really what's behind this. In this obscene difference, you know, 300 times more earning for a CEO of a company than for a worker. I mean, that that it is, it's, it's, it's truly obscene, okay? Uh, but it's short-term thinking. Whereas, again, the Native American, uh, it's, it's thinking of future generations, isn't it? So, Neil, and I thank you, and I thank you for all that you're doing. Uh, and and we have to make this mainstream. We have to change consciousness. And I see all of you as being part of this change of consciousness. Uh, bring it into the mainstream. Write your uh, Congress people. Write your media. I mean, look at this movie, Barbie, and it's such a well-intentioned movie. And it's such a funny movie and such great entertainment. And it still is within the old domination paradigm. So, and, and support, if you can, the Center for Partnership Systems. We need money. So do we, we need money for the film that's being made on this, which is so important. Um, so I'm counting on all of you. And I think we're at the hour. Yes, and that was so well said, my goodness. And I just want to take a tiny second to just thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We're just enjoyed this. So uh, your incredible knowledge, I just I could listen to you forever. But but I can find you also on YouTube at your Center for Partnership dot org. We can find you uh, at the podcast the Power of Partnership podcast. So um, I'm looking forward to I, I, more. I, I just want to say about the Power of Partnership podcast, it really is interviews of people who are doing what we all need to do to use this work. And it it includes a congressman um, from, a, not a, an, actually he's a New York assemblyman, Ron Kim, for example, in New York. Um, it includes uh, uh, people who, uh, well, Lila, George, Lila June is one of the podcasts, for example, Native American people who are using this paradigm. Uh, so I highly, highly recommend that you not only watch these programs, because you can learn from them what uh, that conversation was about. What do we do? And it really depends so much on what we all do exactly this i know uh and it we are now in a period where our future depends really 
on shifting more to the partnership side with uh, biological weapons, uh, with nuclear weapons, with climate change. Uh, the old domination system, you know, what, what is the environmental movement? It challenges the tradition of domination, our once hallowed conquest and domination of nature, right? So does the feminist movement. So does the civil rights movement, you know, that one race somehow is a superior and, and another race is inferior and to be dominated. Uh, we, we have to really know our history. And yeah. yes, I suggest that you start also uh, book groups, reading these books with your friends, with your colleagues, because frankly, that's the only way, is to really immerse yourself and form support groups for partnership. Thank you so much, Rian, for all these action steps we can take. The, it doesn't have to be this way. That's your research question. Does it have to be this way? Um, no. So we, we go back to Arthur again. Million thank yous. We love you, and we'll send it back to Arthur. Arthur, take it away. Thank you so much. You are just an incredible font of wisdom, and I'm so glad you invited people to also uh, uh, join in supporting uh, the forthcoming films about you, both The Chalice and the Blade and Humankind. Uh, and, of course, I'm so glad you mentioned that as one of your four pillars is, is, is uh, stories, movies, and that Barbie is kind of part of that pillar in that it can be a way that we, a discussion starter for getting us to lead into partnership and a, and a parent guide to, to jump off from that to get kids thinking about these issues. Um, and so in any case, uh, I, I do want to say that you also mentioned uh, uh, both the environmental disaster we're heading toward, but also uh, nuclear. And the next week is going to be action day. And what we're focusing on, we are actually in the middle of a major action here on the people-powered planet, we primarily focus on solutions and solution areas like Gary Davis, but it's also crucial that you have both an awareness of the problem and a vision of the, of the solution. And right now we have a, a super major problem in that uh, the world is really heading in many ways toward nuclear disaster, which would be the annihilation of our species. So we are helping to support a film uh, called a television event, and it's about the amazing television event of the day after, which was a film on November 20th, 1983. This is the 40th anniversary of a movie that shook up a nation, rattled the president, and led to the biggest decline in nuclear weapons in history, a 75% reduction because Ronald Reagan, before that movie was the major uh, rattler, we gotta fight this evil empire, uh, he saw that movie. He says in his memoirs, it, uh, it, 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 it disturbed him deeply. He had nightmares and he went from war fighting to saying a nuclear war can never be won and must never be fought. He told that to Congress. And this movie, he says, played a key role in his going into the to, to talking with the Russians instead of fighting with them. So uh, it's a crucial movie television event because it's a great way to remind people of both the horror and danger of nuclear war and how terminal, how hopeless it, it would be. I mean, there's just no way you can even gather together the medical care and everything you need to, 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 to fight it because this, everything gets so, so destroyed uh, and the radiation just continues to poison us. So we are promoting this movie television event today. We are putting out a press release about it. Um, I don't know if, if we should put the, uh, put something, well, go, well, just go, Melanie can put in the chat, go to the world to, is my country .com. Probably the slash www is the best place. We'll put a copy of the press release and everything there probably. And you can see that press release. You can help promote it with your, uh, to your friends and others. Uh, it's probably the best film to warn us about, to rewarn us about where we are and help us step back from the brink. Uh, so I invite you to join us next week in talking about how you can take action to further promote that uh, and join us every week on the People Powered Planet podcast, where we bring you some amazing guests uh, uh, like Rian, but also with wonderful, uh, also with, with action and social days where we interact with each other and build a partnership community working for the world we choose. Uh, thank you, and uh, we'll see you next week on the People Powered Planet podcast. World
medicine, lift up your voices. Oh, you know we got something to say. All we need is the same directions, heading in one way. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our channel and like this video.